Hey everyone, I'm Aria, and in this tutorial, I want to show you how I made this simple animation using just a basic sphere and a very simple noise pattern in Geometry Nodes. Okay, let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is delete this light and the camera, just so that we're starting from scratch. Then we can use the default cube as our container, but it's going to end up looking a lot different, so I'm just going to name this flower. Next, just head up to the top left and we can click and drag to add a new window. Select here and go into the Geometry Node Editor. Then click New. We want to use a UV sphere for our object, so we're just going to delete our group input. Shift A and search for UV sphere. Next, we want to subdivide our mesh, so let's hit Shift A, search for the subdivide mesh node. Next, we want to subdivide the surface. Most of you are probably familiar with the difference between these, but just quickly, if I add a cube and add both of these nodes, you'll see that there is a big difference between them. When using the subdivide mesh, you'll notice that it doesn't change the shape, it just breaks it up into smaller sections, but using the subdivide surface will actually change the shape of your object. This combination gave me the results I was looking for. Next, we want to displace our mesh, and the best node for that is the set position node. This will give us the ability to do more complex displacements. Next, we want to add our noise pattern, and in this case, we want to use a wave texture, which will just give us a specific noise pattern. I'm going to click here and select rings. Then we can select the factor and plug it into the offset. You'll notice now that our sphere is being displaced and it's kind of going off into the right. What we want to do is have our noise displace our sphere along the normal direction. An easy way to do that is to add a vector math node. Click here and select multiply. Because we want our noise to displace along the normal direction, we can multiply our wave texture by our normal direction, and you can start to see our rings. If I just mute these nodes for a second, you'll notice that our sphere has a specific shape. Because of the way it's built, you'll notice that the top and the bottom are different from the sides, which means that our noise will affect it differently based on the axis we use. So we need to just head back to the wave texture and instead of using the X axis, in this case we want to use the Z axis, which gives us a very different result. We also don't want this facing straight up and down, so I'm going to add a transform node right at the end. And because our Y axis is going directly through the center, we can select our Y rotation and set that to 90. I'm going to switch this to 10 just so that there's a little bit more displacement. I'm just going to hit 3 on the numpad just so that we're looking directly down the center. And now that we've got our basic noise pattern, we can add a little bit more complexity by selecting these four nodes. Then you can hit Shift D, then we're just going to connect this directly after. I'm just going to change the scale to 5 and set the rest of these to 0. This wave texture is a little bit strong, so we're going to just bring that down a little bit by adding a math node. Then, if we select multiply, you'll see that it's multiplying it by 0.5. What this node will do is act like a strength value, so you'll see if I bring this all the way down to zero, we're back to our original noise pattern. As I bring this up, you'll see that it keeps adding more strength. It's a little bit spiky, so we can just use a subdivision surface node just to make this a little bit more round. We still have our flat shading, so let's add a set shade smooth node. If I was to hit play, you'll see that our noise pattern is not changing at all, so we just need to add one more node just so that we can change our noise pattern over time. If I go to the first wave texture and use the phase, as I drag over, things change. I'm just going to add a value node, plug this into our offset. The reason you do something like that is so that you can add nodes in between. In this case, we're not going to do that, but this is a good way to set things up. For my animation, I started with this value here, 3.72, and because we want to animate this, we're going to add a keyframe. Then we just want to jump to the endpoint. Since we want this to loop, we're going to push the arrow key so that we're one frame past our ending. Then we can right click our value again and add the same keyframe. Next, we're going to go to frame 125, and again, feel free to experiment. I'm just going to add one to our value and add a keyframe. Make sure that you have your value node selected, and if you're not seeing your keyframes, just make sure that you reselect your object. Then hover over the timeline, hit T, and select Linear. 
The final thing I did for my animation was I had this whole thing rotating. So we're just going to add one more transform node at the very end. Again, make sure you're on frame 1. Then you can insert a single keyframe on the X rotation. Click here to jump to the last frame. Use your arrow key to go one past. Then we're just going to type in 180 degrees and insert a single keyframe. Hover over the timeline and let's select linear. Back to frame 1 and hit spacebar. You'll see that we've got our final animation. For my animation, I added some shaders, lighting, volumetrics, and particles to mine. So if you're interested in seeing how I did that, you can head over to Gumroad and purchase the file that I used for the final animation. Or you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get this file and access to a few others. Or again, you can just buy them individually on my Gumroad. You'll be supporting me as well as the growth of the channel. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you soon. Okay, bye!